1980, the day the mountain blew up, I had about 400 head of cattle on this place, and uh, that ash, that old throw, we got about two, two and a half inches, and it was coming down just black. You couldn't hardly see it. I thought, well, if I get out of this dang thing, uh, I'm gonna get out, get out of the cattle business and get back to wine grapes. In the late 1970s, many of us moved from jobs in California to join the industry. And at that point, the industry was you know, one big winery and a few little ones. There were eight commercial wineries when I got up here. And I think there was like nine wineries. <laughs> when I entered the business in 84, there were 20 wineries, and today there are nearly 700. Chaz Nagel and Dr. Clore had uh, some assistants that made their wines. Then they had this panel of people over, over at WSU that would taste them against California wines. And they did that for years, you know, keeping the records on it. And that's the way they proved that we had a big area that could grow wine grapes. Today we have pushing 40,000 acres of vineyards, and that is uh, for perspective. Uh, about the size of Napa Valley. If the 1980s were winter hardiness challenges, the 1990s were maximizing wine quality challenges. So what things do we need to do next to go to the next level of quality? The industry and the research community in our state are really uh, well meshed. A real key to that, of course, is the cornerstone institution for research and education, and that's the new Wine Science Center in Richmond. You know, something you, that might have been done in Germany over 100 years happened here within 20. Every great region in the world, whether it's Bordeaux, Burgundy, Tuscany, you name it, uh, they all have a leading institution that helps guide winemaking and uh, viticultural research. We're no different. Uh, but we have an opportunity here to be best in class.